fever is our body's natural defensive reaction against various diseases, mostly inflammations and infections. It does not protect the body on its own, but is part of the coordinated action of the immune system. Although the process is stressful for the body, invading pathogens are much more intolerant of the rise in the temperature of their environment, such as the body. Overall, this allows immune cells to fight them more effectively. Is it necessary then to bring down a fever? The body's thermoregulatory center, the hypothalamus, is located in the brain. The body's internal temperature is roughly constant, averaging 37.5 degrees Celsius both in heat and severe cold, while the skin is slightly cooler. Under the arms is usually between 36 degrees Celsius and 36.5 degrees Celsius. There are also small variations within the duration of a day. For women, the menstrual cycle also affects the values. The normal body temperature is called the target temperature, which is reached by balancing heat loss and heat production. If the blood temperature is higher than this, the hypothalamus tells the body to produce more sweat, and the evaporation of moisture cools the body's surface. The blood vessels in the skin dilate and the warm blood flowing through them releases heat by evaporating close to the skin surface. For example, it cools down. If on the other hand, the body temperature starts to drop, we start to feel cold. The hypothalamus then sends out a new command. Sweat production stops and the blood vessels in the skin constrict. If the body temperature drops further, involuntary muscle movements are triggered. The contraction of the smooth muscles that keep hairs erect creates goosebumps. Then, we start shivering to produce heat by rapid muscle movement. This is called having the chills. In fever, on the other hand, the hypothalamus, triggered by certain compounds, temporarily raises the target level of normal body heat. These compounds are called pyrogens, and are in fact identical to the immune system's message-transmitting compounds called cytokines. They are produced by our immune cells mainly in a defense against pathogens, but also during cancer and certain autoimmune processes. When the fever goes up, the body goes into heating mode. This is when the processes that occur when you feel cold are triggered. Heating up the body is energy and fluid intensive. A 1 degree Celsius rise means a 10 to 12% increase in metabolic rate and a 15 to 20% increase in fluid demand. At the peak of the fever, for example, when the new target value is reached, the sensation of cold disappears. The skin flushes and the balance of heat production and heat dissipation is maintained at the higher temperature. To maintain the elevated body temperature, blood circulation speeds up and the heart rate increases. When fever is reduced spontaneously or by antipyretics, it means that the target value has returned to normal. The body then begins to lose heat and flushes and sweats profusely. High body temperature is unbearable for many pathogens, so fever can help the healing process in certain infections. It follows that it does not necessarily need to be controlled, as it is a beneficial condition. But where does a fever start? And if it does start, when should it be controlled? When the temperature in the armpits reaches or exceeds 37.2 degrees Celsius, we talk about an elevated temperature, while fever starts above 38 degrees Celsius. Above 39 degrees Celsius is a high fever and above 40.5 degrees Celsius is a very high fever, hyperpyrexia. In most cases, the fever will go away on its own within a short time. While it lasts, it is vital that the patient is properly hydrated, as dehydration caused by fever can be more dangerous than the fever itself. Water is perfect for hydration, but if sweating is very heavy, mineral salts should also be replenished. In addition to light soups, sport energy drinks are also a good way to do this. However, 
A fever that persists for days or even weeks puts particular strain on certain organs. So reducing temperature may be warranted in the case of elderly or chronically ill patients. Antipyretics inhibit the production of pyrogenic compounds in the body. Thus, the target body temperature in the hypothalamus returns to normal and the body begins to cool itself. Heat dissipation can be helped by wearing light clothing and a thin blanket, or by applying a compress to the forehead or limbs. In different diseases, fever patterns can be observed, which is why hospitals keep fever charts and why it is important medical information about how body temperature changes during the course of the illness. A 1 degree Celsius rise in temperature increases the heart rate by 10 and the respiratory rate by 4 to 6. As the fever subsides, the pulse and respiratory rate normalize. If the fever subsides but the pulse and respiratory rate do not return to normal, this may indicate a serious problem that may require medical intervention. Fever associated with infections can cause convulsions in susceptible people. This is febrile seizure, which usually occurs under the age of six and in a third of cases has a family history. Although frightening, it is a harmless symptom. Febrile convulsions are a condition involving twitching of the limbs and less commonly, loss of consciousness. In most cases, it stops after a few minutes. However, if the seizure lasts longer than five minutes, an ambulance should be called, as seizures can be a preliminary symptom of epilepsy or more serious infectious diseases with neurological complications. The use of antipyretics or cooling baths is completely ineffective in such cases, and they are not suitable for prevention either. An antispasmodic suppository given into the rectum may help to relieve the nausea. After the first febrile spasm, even a very brief one, you should consult your doctor, who will decide what to do next and prescribe an antispasmodic if necessary. Fevers can usually be treated at home, but a rise in body temperature can also be a warning sign of some serious illnesses. Seek medical attention immediately if the condition of the patient with fever worsens. If they start vomiting or have frequent diarrhea, especially if the patient is an infant or young child. Also, seek medical help if the child is moaning and crying inconsolably, or if they are choking, have difficulty breathing, sleepy, or difficult to wake. Alongside fever, dark purplish rashes that appear in spots and do not fade on pressure, as well as a fever lasting more than three days or a high fever that returns after several days without fever, require rapid medical attention. A hospital visit is required if a baby under three months of age has a fever of 38 degrees or more, or if their temperature rises to or above 39 degrees between three and six months of age. Some people are not susceptible to fever even when ill, but for the majority, fever as a symptom is a very early indicator of illness, and its nature can provide important information for doctors. Although fever can be stressful for the body, it is a useful part of the immune system's defense mechanism. The right choice of antipyretic treatment, depending on the patient's condition, can greatly aid recovery. Subscribe to our channel. Don't miss out on any new episodes.